Keith McGowan here, the Outboard Dad, here to help you have a better boating experience. Today we're going to continue on with our Mercury 150 horse rebuild 2.5. Also I want to talk about, it's coming up to the last week of my used Outboard Motor Buying Guide. It's only free till the 13th of October. I'll think about extending it if someone shoots me an uh, email later on at Keith at OutboardDad.com. I'll decide and also send me any comments with the outboard motor, used outboard motor buying guide. I would like to help you find what you're looking for to have, make a good purchase and have longevity of your motor and not be stuck out on the water with a motor that is dead. So continuing on, we now are ready to do our flex home. Okay, that's just this manufacturer of this particular honing dingleberry hone, Christmas tree hone. So these are sized for the cylinder that you're working on. So this is for the 3.5 size cylinder that I'm working on. So it is slightly larger than that. So we're gonna lubricate this up really good. You'll see that the inside of my box is all covered in oil and grease and grit and everything. So we're gonna go ahead and do a, a finish hone but it's not gonna be the final home. So we're gonna do another one after this that was taught to me. We're also gonna do our ports very carefully with a Dremel tool and a flap disc. Then we're gonna do another plateau home, which I'll show you. Again, it was taught to me and actually brought a lot of longevity to the motors that I rebuilt. It's just an, an added step that I learned. So let's do the uh, dingleberry home first, right? So it's just a bunch of balls. They come in different grits. This one's a 260 grit. Uh, it is not going to remove material, but it's also going to uh, give us a better finish. So what we look for, as we spoke about in our cylinders, is we need a place for the oil to stay. And that's why we do that cross hatch. That's why you'll see guys do a break, a glaze, they'll call it, if the cylinder wall is shiny and doesn't have the cross hatch anymore then the oil has no place to go. The, the rings will just wipe the oil right off each time the piston goes up and down and you'll have more heat, more friction, and less longevity. The motor's not gonna last as long. So each time we cut grooves, we have like a grain of that cast iron sleeve in this particular model that we end up uh, providing those small grooves. And each time we hone again with a finer grit, we kind of flatten them off, but we leave a, a deeper groove inside there so our rings can ride on the upper part and the grooves will hold the oil. The reason we go in with this is now we need to kind of give it a, a finish. So we're going to kind of round off those top pieces. So there's still a place for the oil to go, but we're going to smooth it a little bit more so our piston rings can really seat in there and again, have longevity. The break-in period is key for these motors. So if the break-in is done properly and we have a good cross hatch with a nice, smooth yet cross hatch in those cylinders to hold the oil, it's gonna have a better break-in period. The motor's gonna last a lot longer. So we're gonna oil this up really good and start doing our finish on for this one cylinder right now. So we've got this lubed up really well. I'll clean this out and we will measure again just to be sure but it shouldn't be taking anything off just like to double check so that's really it for this that's all the time we go in there maybe 25 usually count 25 30 times I do it the same in each cylinder now what I'm gonna do is put my cheater glasses on I'm gonna get my Dremel tool out with my flat disc and we're gonna do these ports. I'm gonna see if I can move this block to get a little better picture for you guys so you can see how I get in there. And what I wanna do is, I wanna be sure that my ports don't have any sharp edges. When we hone the cylinder, right, there was little chamfers around those uh, ports. Same thing with the top of the cylinder, also had a little chamfer in it. So we're gonna do that. This way when we put our pistons in with our piston ring compressor tool, and we squeeze it, 
This way it has a little chamfer so we take a less of a chance of cracking a ring while we're tapping the pistons in. So let's get our Dremel tool out and our flap disc and I'll show you how that gets done. Or I should say how I was taught to do it that's worked well for me. So what we're going to try and do with our Dremel tool is these ports, we're going to take our Dremel tool and we're just going to take our flap disc and we're going to go around these ports to take the edges off, nice and easy. So if we get in close here, we can see that what I did was I just went around the outside of that port and just took the sharpness off of it. Okay, so we're gonna continue that with the rest of these ports. Uh, one by one, we're gonna clean them all up and then I'm gonna go to the top of the cylinder. So we're just gonna go across the top of the cylinder here just to make a nice little edge there actually still is a little bit of a chamfer because we only came out 15 thousandths so we'll do a little edge around here as well just so we can make sure we don't catch that ring when we push it in with our um, piston ring compressor tool when we're popping our pistons in so we're going to clean that up then we're going to do that diamond home i'm going to put my cheater glasses on and get a really really good close look and be sure that I went around all of the edges and it appears that I did and it all looks really nice. So now we're ready for that diamond tip home. Let me see if I can give you a close up here of what this looks like. So now we can see down deeper into our cylinder. You can see a nice cross hatch we have there and you can see that our ports are chamfered exhaust port going out there and our intake ports and we have a really nice cross hatch in there so now let's get our pl plateau home and we'll get in there and see if we can remove some of those stones that are left in there so i have my plateau home set up we wiped it out i'm going to put some wd-40 in here because i want to have a nice slippery surface for our plateau home to work with so I keep these stones, these stones, I keep this brush in a bag because I don't want any heavy grit to get in it. The idea of this, this is a diamond tipped plateau hone. And the reason I go in with this brush is every time you grind a cylinder, because that's really what we're doing, we leave little bits of stone in the metal. Now that's why we do a finer as well to get a lot of that out, but this is gonna take the remainder of it out. I'm gonna do this now and then after we clean the block, I'm gonna do it again with 30 weight oil, that Shell Rotel oil that we talked about, one more time before I do a final cleaning on the block. So it's pretty straightforward, not too much different than when we did our uh, dingleberry home. So we can take a look after we ran our plateau hone in there, you can see it's not taking any material off, right? That's not the purpose. The purpose is to clean all of those little grits of stone that are got, get embedded into the cast iron sleeve. We don't want any of that left in there because obviously that's going to cause damage to our cylinder wall. So the plateau hone is pretty much the finishing step of that cylinder now. So now that, that one cylinder is done. Let's double check. We're going to take our dial bore gauge here. We shouldn't have taken anything off with the plateau home, but we'll just double check. And we are right at 5,000. We are a hair under 5,000, which is exactly where we want to be. 4,000 is what the manufacturer said, as, as we were talking about. My ring gap should be the same, should be right at that 22,000. We can check that as well. But this one, this one cylinder now is complete and ready to go. The only final thing I'm gonna do is take that piston and put it in there once I stand the block up. 
because it'll be hard for me to get it back out again. <clears throat> and I just want to work it back and forth in there by hand just to make sure nothing's binding and there's nothing, shouldn't at all, but it's just, it's just a final test that I go through. So now I'm going to work on these other two cylinders with my 300 grit and then do my ball hone, my dingleberry hone, and then do my plateau hone and chamfer all my ports before I do my, uh, my honing with the uh, plateau hone. And then we'll make sure it's correct. Now there's different style plateau homes that are out there. There's diamond stones you can get. There's all kinds of fancy stuff you can get into. Uh, I haven't personally done any of those with the diamond stones because this is the way uh, I was taught to do it and I've had very good success doing it this way. So please like, subscribe, send me any comments that you have and I'll continue on with this side. Then we'll get the other side done. And then I'm gonna clean all of my surfaces, all my mating surfaces, make sure all my old gasket is off take my file with my uh, emery cloth on all of my mating surfaces, clean up all my studs that are sticking out and the threads that are on them that maybe got damaged when we were taking it apart. I see one here, looks like it might be a little bit corroded. So we'll clean all that up. And once all the surfaces are clean, then we're gonna take it outside with my pressure washer. We're gonna take a little bit of sea foam, put it on the cylinder walls first, because that'll help uh, aid in uh, preventing flash rust because as soon as you get that cast iron a little bit wet, in few seconds even, it can have a flash rust on it, so we want to avoid. A little bit of that isn't going to hurt us. Uh, some old timers actually like to have a little flash rust on there because they feel it aids in break-in. I don't, I don't agree with that particular uh, mindset, but some, some do. So then we'll clean it up and we'll start our reassembly process. So I'm going to finish up the rest of these cylinders. And then this video series will continue on. It's going to take me a little time to get to that point. And don't forget my used outboard motor buying guide. Please like, subscribe, and send me any comments that you have. It's only until October 13th, $20 value on Amazon. And I'm going to offer a special deal when it's listed on Amazon. I'm going to offer a special deal that anybody that buys it will get 15 minutes of free consulting time over the phone with me if they're buying a boat or a motor that I can help them out with. So please like, subscribe and let's get out on the water. Have a great day.